Okay, another beautiful day on UC Berkeley campus. And of course, I will be going to the math building to do math videos. Okay, let's do some classy proof for fun. And I'll show you guys how to prove a statement by using contradiction. And I'll show you guys how to prove that square root of two is irrational. First of all, we have to know what does the word irrational mean. Well, that simply means that a number is not rational. Don't get me wrong, irrational means not rational. That's just how it is. And now the question is, what does it mean to have a rational number? We have to know the definition. A rational number is a number that you can write in the form of a over b, and both a and b are integers, right? And b cannot be zero because it's on the denominator. Okay, so now, this is a statement, and you may just think that, okay, we all know square root of two is irrational, but we are gonna come with a mathematical proof, right? And let me read this again for you guys. I'm gonna read it as the following. I will show you guys square root of two is not rational, okay? And it does have a not in the statement if you read it that way, and that's a good hint that you can try to do it by the contradiction, right? Whenever you have a statement that's kind of like a bad statement or something that has not, try to do it by contradiction. And let me give you guys an example before I show you guys the proof, okay? So, as we all know, we are human beings, and we cannot fly, right? So, here's a statement that we know. A human being can not fly. That's a statement, right? Everybody knows that, but how would you prove it? Well, you see, this statement has the word not in it. To do this, if you want to really prove it, so I will show you. Proof. Suppose for a contradiction that this guy can actually fly. Okay? Suppose for a contradiction that this person was able to fly. In that case, what can you do? Well, imagine that you make him stand on the top of a building, and if he was able to fly, not make him jump down. If he was able to fly, what would happen? He can really fly, he will be safe, right? But, suppose a human being can fly, you are making him jumping down off the building, you guys all know what will happen, right? Because at the end, he's going to be like this. And that's messed up, right? So, this is it. And by the way, whenever we are done with the proof, we draw a square and then shading in. Or we can put on QED, but I like this much better. So once again, if somebody thinks that they can fly, sure, you can prove to them, just ask them to, no, don't do that. <laughs> anyway, here is the deal. So if you want to prove something that has the not in the statement, uh, just try to do its contradiction. It may not work, but it's a good try, right? So suppose that, in this case, we'll show this by contradiction. Suppose for contradiction that square root of two was actually rational, okay, was rational. Well, in that case, you know we can write it as a over b because that's the definition of a rational number, a over b, where a and b are in z, meaning that a and b are integers. And this is the notation for that. a and b are integers, okay? And because we wrote square root of two as a over b, b cannot be zero, otherwise you are dividing by zero, so that's no good. Furthermore, because we have a fraction here, we can assume that once we write square root of 2 as a over b, we reduce the fraction already. In another word, the fraction is in the lowest term, and we can say the greatest common divisor of a and b is just equal to 1. All right? So suppose you have a fraction, you have, like, say, 3 over 6. You don't need to write this 3 over 6 because you can always write it as 1 half, right? So that's the idea. And you see, once you reduce to a lower term, then the greatest common divisor is just 1. Anyway, that's the prep work. And now here's the computation. From this, let's multiply b on both sides and put down the a first. So we will have a is equal to square root of 2 times b. And then let's square both sides. So that's how we get the a square. And then square root of 2, if you square that, you get 2. b squared is just b squared, right? And now you see, a squared is equal to 2 times b squared. Well, this is 2 times b squared. b is the integer. b squared is also integer. 
two times the integer tells you that a square is even, right? a square is equal to two times something. a square has to be even. And now here's the deal. If you know a square is even, and the truth is a to the first power has to be also even. And I'll show you by a lemma right here. And this is what you do. Because sometimes when you're trying to write a proof, if this is not convincing enough, you just put down by lemma and you're just going to work it out somewhere, which I did that already. Okay? Here is the lemma. If a squared is even, then a is also even. And I will also go over the proof by contrapositive for you guys. This means that we will show, we first assume the opposite of the condition, meaning we'll show that if A is not even, meaning if A is odd, then we will negate the original condition, meaning we will conclude that A squared is not even, which is also odd. So this and that are the equivalent statements, right? Once again, if A squared is even, then A is also even. It's the same as saying, if a is odd, then a squared has to be also odd. It's easier to show this right here. If you can show this, then you can show the original statement, right? Okay, so suppose a is odd, then we can write a as two times an integer. So we've just write it down as two times n, but we add one to it. This is the definition of an odd number, right? So you just write it down, a is equal to 2n plus 1 for some n in z. Once again, this means that n is an integer. Then what we are going to do is square both sides. a squared will be the square of this. So just multiply this out. You get 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. And to be technical, from here, you must factor out 2 and then put down the rest. So we will have 2 and then 2n squared plus 2n, okay? and then you must have the plus one at the end. And as you can see, once we have this, this right here, it's clearly an integer as well. And this is how you indicate that it is an integer, right? This belongs to Z because you know, all, all this is just integers. <laughs> Two times the integer plus one, this is the definition of an R number. And as you can see, A squared is has that form. That means a squared has to be also odd. And we are done with the lemma, so you put a little box, color in, shade in, just like that. So, because the contrapositive was true, we proved it, the original statement is also true, all right? So this is how you write down the proofs. Anyway, let's get back to this. a squared is even, a is also even, and because now we are saying that a is an even number, we can write it as a is equal to 2 times some other integer. So we just put down 2 times k for some k in z, okay? So this part is the fun part because you're just doing two computations. And now we'll do more computation. I'm just going to plug in 2k into this a right here. This is a lot of fun. That's all the boards that we have. So from here, originally we had that a is equal to square root of 2 times b, and a is equal to 2k, so just put this down right here, and then you square both sides. 2 squared is 4, k squared is k squared, square root of 2 squared is 2, and then b squared just b squared, right? And now, I'm going to put down this right here first, and I will divide by 2 on both sides as well. So that's why you see b squared right here, the 2 is gone already, the 4 becomes a 2 because I divide both sides by 2. And I put down the k squared right here, and now we have b squared equals to 2 times k squared. And once again, this is just an integer. So that means b squared is in the form of 2 times the integer. b squared is even. And we use the same lemma. We can also say that b is also even by the same lemma that we had earlier, right? So what we get right now is we see that both a and b are even. Isn't it? I haven't said that word for, for a while, but yeah. Both A and B are even, so they do have a common factor too, right? 
because whenever you have an even number, it's always going to be 2 times something. Right here, b is even. That means b is equal to 2 times something. And then earlier, we also know that a is 2 times something as well. Therefore, they must have a common factor 2. And see, this is bad because this contradicts our earlier assumption that the greatest common divisor of a and b was equal to 1. And now you're saying it has 2. So this is no good. This is a disagreement. So O in O it is just like if you make a person jump off a building if he or she thinks that he or she can fly and then something messed up. Because if he was able to fly, he wouldn't be dying right here, right? So here is the deal. We must have the truth that square root of 2 was actually irrational to begin with. Otherwise, you will get this disagreement. So this is the conclusion that we have. Square root of 2 is actually irrational, all right? And we are all done. I'll put a box and then share this thing. It's really cool, right? And this is the kind of proof that all the math majors, they have to go through and then yeah, as you guys know, I'm in Berkeley, so I just want to do some proof with you guys. So just my good old memories. And that's it.